What's up, everybody? Welcome to yet another Dual Shockers discussion. I am Mario Rivera, and today we're going to be talking about some very special, something special to me. I'm a huge fan of Resident Evil, and today, of course, they have done the Resident Evil showcase, showcasing Resident Evil Village and some other goodies, which I will get into. Uh, I am, of course, joined by fellow Dual Shocker uh, Ricky Freck. How you doing, Ricky? I'm good. Very excited. Y'all were asking how they're going to put Bernie in, and I just saw an image of him in the place of the Duke, uh, that merchant guy. <laughs> so that's the answer to that question. That's All spot right. on, too. I don't know why it didn't come to me yeah, immediately. It works. No, that's the only seat that I remember seeing in the trailer, so that's, that makes sense. And, of course, joining us, uh, we're having uh, another two-puncher here. Um, I, of course, have it. Jerry Green, how you doing? Hello. How are you? I'm doing splendid now after i've seen a good 20 minutes of uh, new resident evil stuff so we have a lot to disseminate so i'm excited to get into it uh and then of course uh my friend who of course invited me on his resident evil podcast back in the day uh i have of course andrew taylor how you doing i, I, I know him as papa you? bear just want to bring that out just yeah I, I just realized i guess i don't have my last name on my twitter i maybe should put that there uh but <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm doing really good i i'm glad that we got some Resident Evil stuff to talk about here. No, oh, for sure. Um, of course, uh, I just want to start off. Obviously, we are switching the format of this show. Uh, we're doing now individual segments before we get into our big topic. So our big main thing, I do want to ask, Jared, how did, what got you into video games? Um, I think what really got me into games, because I had been cursory to it for a while when I was younger, was when I lived in an apartment complex my mother's single mother she had three kids um so we were behind on consoles basically my whole life because i was poor but we kind of when i was i want to say eight or nine we got a nintendo first original nintendo with like 300 games in a box oh wow and i think for the next three or four years (laughs) The, that sort of rabbit hole, almost literally, that I dug through kind of started something that never stopped, which is being a part of games and having games be a part of me. Um, <laughs> and I, re- I really don't know, like, that's maybe the only like singular catalyzing point in my life that I can point to games, but since then, they've been a part of my life my entire life. No, that's that's pretty wonderful. I remember obviously the NES being my fa- first console as well. I still have like a photo of my dad uh, with the light gun <laughs> in mm-hmm. my hand at the age of like two. So you just see this baby just gadding up with the with the light gun. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I have that memory uh, somewhere here in the house. So one hundred percent, I remember that being my first console as well. Uh, Andrew, what what got you into games? Yeah, I mean, I was kind of like Jarrett, where it was like we were always behind on a console. And so we never, I, I never was someone who was like actively playing games growing up, but my brothers were. And so like, whenever we got a console, like they were the ones who were playing it first before anyone else. And then, you know, as I got older, I guess they respected me more and they were like, Oh, Hey, do you want to play now? Like, here's the controller. Like, you know, it's like one of those, I'm, I'm the baby of the family. So it's like, <laughs> you know i'm you know whatever small so they don't give a shit um but yeah like you know it, it just kind of grew into me where it was like okay now i get to play games with my brothers and you know we played like the you know ninja, ninja turtles game back in uh turtles in time, turtles time like on yeah. what was that on the nes or snes i can't quite remember um but then we, like we eventually got like a sega genesis which is honestly some of the best gaming memories i ever had because like playing uh sonic 2 like every single weekend like i'd always go and rent it from the local video store um and like that was just like a lot of fun and then like there was like a power rangers game that was also like on yeah, was, um was there? sega genesis i think it was the power rangers movie game too yes i think so it was like <laughs> pretty freaking lit um and then yeah like it just kind of progressed into that like it just you know, we got an N64, but like all my siblings were older. So like it was the family N64, but it was really just mine. Um, and then like, you know, progressed in like an Xbox. And then from there, I was just like, I, I was on my own at that point. So I was just buying consoles by myself. But um, yeah, now I just I have a PlayStation 5 and and a PC and a Switch. And it's like you have hundreds of games to play. So, you know, but yeah, 
I just games are a weird thing that kind of just like crept into my life and like they've never left. So, but it's also one of the best mediums to like for pe- for you know developers and you know studios to like express themselves, but also to like take your mind off the world as well. So. I yeah, just love and, it. and you get to interact with it too. It's like yeah. it's unlike any other media where you're reading yeah. a book or if you're watching a movie, you're still passive. Mm-hmm. You're 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 still enjoying the experience. You're almost imagining a lot of things in your head, but this is yeah. actually the imagination put forth from somebody else that you're actually experiencing. Exactly, and there's enjoy. a massive community, like as you can see, like us right now yes. that have all met because of games. So like yeah. that, that in and of itself is pretty incredible. So. No, 100%. Actually, one yeah. of the things that blew my mind as a kid, and it was like, I can't believe games could be any cooler is when uh, the Sega Genesis turned into the Sega CD. Or, yeah. or you know, <laughs> when you like pop this thing yeah. on top of a thing, mm-hmm. and I was like, what? And then you yeah. get the Sonic, and uh, I think it's the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge, which yep. the top pops off, and you pop into I'm like, what is happening? This is insane. Yeah, why is my console a Transformer? Yeah, yeah 1, it was got really weird there for a minute, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so good so good okay thank you so much for telling me a little bit about both of your histories it's uh very good to interesting to see how a lot of us connect in certain ways and how of us are different so love uh bringing that up uh moving on we're going to talk about obviously the games that we've been playing lately and with that i'm actually going to go with ricky ricky what have you been playing lately i know you've been playing um, a lot of first 30 games but is there anything else you've been playing man you know i've been playing that yakuza of course you've been playing yakuza <laughs> um yeah i'm trying to wrap up yakuza 5 and six and finish out the series uh but other than that i've been playing a lot of fifa unfortunately um <laughs> i go to that game all the time i don't know why but i can't stop um and then yeah i mean that's pretty much been it recently except for like you know random games that i've been doing for the site so okay i've uh i've been playing fortnite uh because i've just been playing it non-stop they just dropped the predator so i had to oh, get yeah. the predator skin which is unlockable if you have the battle pass already. So you had to fight him, which is awesome. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, but yeah, I got all of his stuff. Yeah, he also has an apartment apparently in Fortnite. So you had to go to his apartment. Oh, Predator? Yeah. Predator's Loft. Yeah. <laughs> that checks yes. Out. You have to go to Predator's Loft basically. And then it unlocks the, uh, the emote so that you can take the mask off. And then that way you, you can actually rock without the, the mask on. So. <laughs> Very, I love Fortnite. Fortnite's the stupidest fan fiction I've ever seen. It's so weird, but yeah. Yeah. It's definitely right. fanfic. 100%. Andrew, what, what have you been playing? Um, I've been kind of low key with games lately. Um, I wanted to play something on my Switch a couple weeks ago, and I restarted a game that Jarrett knows very well uh, Blasphemous. Mm. Interesting. And that game is really freaking hard. <laughs> and. <laughs> It's frustrating because a lot of the tutorials that I look up on like YouTube to try to like if I'm like in a pinch and I need to, I'm like I'm so stuck like I'm not moving forward anymore because it's a Metroidvania. You know how that goes sometimes. But, um, you know, you just get stuck and you have no idea what to do. And I've looked up videos and all of the videos I've found are like playthroughs. And so like that's kind of mm-hmm. frustrating because I'm like I have not going to, you know, skip through this whole five hour video and try to find out where they're at but um yeah i i I put that game down like this last week but i want to go back again um and then i'm i'm back into valorant too on pc um that game is frustratingly difficult difficult at times because you'll just get matchmaked with like people who are just out of their minds crazy good um and for those who don't know what uh valorant is it's a you know, it's a like a CS:GO kind of meets Overwatch sort of game. Um, check it out; it's actually really cool. It's by Riot, um, and I'm I'm having like a lot of fun with it. I I played the beta when it first uh, came out at the beginning of 2020, and then I rolled into the main game. I think when that came out in May of 2022 or 2020 as well oh my god you um, just future proofed us like, yeah what? please don't don't tell <laughs> yeah no <laughs> I, I made sure to correct myself um <laughs> but yeah so now i'm back on that game and i'm having a lot of fun and there's new characters who are kind of like breaking them you know or changing the meta um so like that's a lot of fun too um and then i did just buy hitman 3 yesterday mm. um and i really want to get into that game but i actually haven't played hitman 1 and 2 and so I was like thinking to myself, I know that you can 
import data from Hitman One and Two into Three or something like that. If you but buy apparently... uh, One and Two, so where do you, where yeah. system are you buying it on? A PC? I'm buying it on a PS5. On a PS5. So if you buy, yeah. well, I'm not sure what the. No, yeah, I think it's the same thing. If you buy the PS4 copies, then you should be able to then port them into. Yeah, there three. was like a weird message on there this morning that said something like. If you don't do this now, we're and you try to do it later, we're gonna erase all your Hitman Three data. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm like, why am I getting punished for this? Okay, um, <laughs> so I want to play the first two. I don't know yeah. if I should start three, but I might just roll into three and you know. Or aren't two first? The first two's maps are in three. No, uh, you have to, you have have to, have to have either buy. Them. You have to buy yeah. them. You either have to buy one and two, mm-hmm. and then I think there's a premiere pass that so you can buy that instead. I'm okay. pretty positive that's right. how it works. I don't know. It's weird. I think that Premiere Pass is only on PC, though, which is also which, very strange. Which could make sense because the, the way that you buy things on there could be segmented, like from like the Epic Store has. Yeah, uh, that's the, that's the big problem in Hitman. One and two were sold in different marketplaces. That's so. right. So, but honestly, yeah. you could find those games for pretty cheap. If I'm not yeah, mistaken. I found them on Amazon. They're both like fifteen dollars each. Um, you know, yeah, and then sometimes you can get even cheaper. But if you buy them, then if you want to get that content, like I have Hitman Two. And I have Hitman One, and then it just imported it because um, I played via GeoForce Now, the like live service that they have for yeah, PC. Yeah, yeah. So all of it just like connected because I had them all on Steam, That's I nice. believe. So yeah, I'm playing one through in two, which actually yeah. all this talk of three has got me back into wanting to finish it. So I'm finishing one through two, then I'll go through yeah. two, and then I think I'll eventually buy three because yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to put me personally. I don't want to put down the sixty yeah. for as of right now. But that's cool that you at least. Or, is this your first Hitman game? This is my first Hitman game, mm-hmm. and the reason, ever. yeah, ever. So the reason why I I've gotten into Hitman is because of Stealth Gamer BR on YouTube. Sure. And I don't know if you guys, I'm, I have to, you guys might know them or, um, but like, yeah, they just do stealth videos, and just like their Dishonored Two stuff is really awesome, and like their Hitman stuff is really awesome, um, and they just like basically. Do, they do what the game tells you you can do, which is basically whatever you want. Yeah. Um, so, and you assassinate your target any any way you can. So, yeah, I don't. He, you know, they make it way they make it look way easier than what it is because, like, I've tried <laughs> I've tried to do some of the stuff they're doing. I'm like, I have no idea how they did that. But yeah, I mean, I I played like the opening of Hitman One actually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, at a friend's oh. house, but I don't have the game, but. Hitman 3 is the first Hitman game I've bought, so... No, for sure. I'll be yeah. enjoying it. I really enjoyed my time with it, because, um, I, like I said, I just played it in my bed. I just played it on my phone. I played it with a controller, <laughs> and I was like, this is a fun game just to lay around and just have fun. Yeah. Um, but it made me actually, like, maybe I should actually, like, download my computer and start actually playing it. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to give that a shot. Yeah, me too. Jared, what have you been playing? It's funny, um... The entire segment i was thinking what have i been playing i don't actually know <laughs> um but no i've been playing uh i've been going back through knights of the old republic one and two i, I beat one week and a half ago and now i'm in the middle of two um i always remember liking two more than one and mm-hmm. i've confirmed that through these playthroughs but i think there's a whole lot of two i just forgot Sure. And I don't know if it was just because, I don't know, 2004 was wild or <laughs> was wild that time. was literally 15 years ago. And like maybe all these minor like you should talk to this guy and then go over and talk to this guy. Side quests is just things are just going to fall out of my head eventually. Sure, sure. Um, but there are like large swaths of these games that I completely forgot. And it's like blowing my mind because I remember having such a strong opinion and feeling about particular moments in that game that i thought were like most of that game and i was wrong <laughs> most of that game are things i just completely forgot existed um but i am an obsidian fan so i'm just trying to like reconnect to some of those things i played a bunch of like uh pillars of eternity last year like getting back into that sort of dense rpg mindset um because i normally don't because i don't really have the time but early january not a whole lot of games to play. Don't gotta like hit any deadlines or anything. So like I got time to waste in Kotor too. So I will. <laughs> uh, and I mean I play for, like League of Legends like daily. So I don't. Even t- it's like not even the thing I talk about. It's just a reflex. Uh, if I have if I have forty minutes, I'm probably playing League of Legends. Uh, you're probably aware of my friend uh, Logan Moore. 
Yeah. Um, awesome me place. and Logan played. Uh, we had a charity stream. Um, That's right. At Irrational Passions a couple weeks ago. And we played uh, a few games with Ian Preshel mm. um, and Keylock. And it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. That's how it was described to me as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know him pretty much still constantly playing that game. So whenever someone brings up League of Legends, I immediately think of Logan Moore, who's no longer with us in this website. Uh, rest he, in peace. Rest <laughs> in peace. Uh, but he's doing a lot of great work at uh, comic books, so good for him. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, so when you played both the you know the Republic games, how are they holding up in par- comparison to, you know, from today? Uh, I, I also thought, like, dabbled the idea of going back. I argue that the first game does not hold up. Okay. Um the second game has a lot of quality of life changes from the first that I think feel a little better. Sure. Um, the the honesty that combat system doesn't really work for me, um, but it, that combat system has a lineage in a lot of uh, computer RPG combat systems. With like that real time with pause sort of yeah. thing, where every six seconds or so you're gonna your your characters do actions, and your job is kind of to program their list of actions. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you need to stop to make sudden adjustments, then hit space and move around. But I don't really find that system to be incredibly engaging, really. Sure. Um, when it is engaging, it's because something's going wrong. And depending on the balance of these real-time and pause games, if it's going wrong, then there's no coming back. So, like, no news is good news with these games most of the time. Um, KOTOR is based off of the old Saga tabletop game, so it's very, like, Roll20, like... like d20 style sort of uh dnd-esque uh, mechanics so if you have any familiarity with that you're going to be pretty all right building characters that can kind of operate themselves um which is what i've done it's just with a lot of those games um you find that characters uh i guess this is any game where you're like the super powerful protagonists like you're even in an elder scrolls game or whatever you can be whatever you want so a lot of these side characters are kind of ancillary and i found especially in two like they introduced several characters that would be your role if you if you want to play a jedi who wants to hit things with a lightsaber like there's like four of those in your party so you don't need all four so that's three at, at least three characters you just don't interact with at all because you don't really need them Sure. If you want to talk to them, then sure, but you're not bringing them with you because you don't need three people with lightsabers just beating on things. <laughs> um, if you want a balanced party, quote unquote, anyway. Um, but it's funny to see the kind of design where that was probably like the coolest thing in 2004 as far as like character design is concerned and like mm-hmm. how to flesh out your party and like the, the light and dark system and all this kind of morality stuff. It's funny to see how far we have and have not come since then. Um, Especially with Obsidian, who then went on to go do Fall Game, and then like, sort of again redefine morality systems and storytelling, and like, it's funny to see like the, the kernels be planted from Bioware and Obsidian that far ago, like that long ago, and then see how it really did the, the roots really did blossom through the industry. Um, I didn't think I was going to have like this weird sort of trip down memory lane uh, with the entire industry playing these games, but here I am. No, wow, that's awesome. Are you are you messing with a fan patch at all? Isn't there a big fan patch? Yeah, the, so, so two they did like a whole restoration patch, which uh, mm-hmm. takes into account a bunch of stuff that kind of got left on the cutting room floor, um, changes like the frame rate and ups the res. Like it's a whole bunch of stuff, and it's good and bad because they kind of just like unlock all the stuff that was locked away, but some of it was locked away for a reason. Yeah. So like things you thought had like whole segments of quests just happened differently because they changed it last minute. Um, and like, there are bugs that you really can't avoid. And if you, you, if you didn't know it was going to happen now it did. So there you go. (laughs) Um, but it's interesting. Um, it's, it's, it kind of messes with the pace a little bit because you get stuff you should have gotten like way earlier than you should have gotten it. But like that, I'm okay with that personally. So (laughs) Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's awesome. I'm glad that you're, you're going back and you're experiencing all these things and it's reforming everything that you've ever thought of going forward. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. So, uh, okay. Uh, I think it is now time. I think we've let everyone wait long enough. We have to talk about the fact that today we got a couple of news starting for the new Capcom, uh, Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 
uh, village. I almost call it Resident Evil 8 Village. It is Resident Evil Village. It is the 8th in the series, um, which is a sequel to 7, uh, Biohazard. It takes place, seems like, a couple of years after that one. And some real terrible shit happened. Uh, if you watch the last several trailers, uh, Chris Redfield, your lovable good guy, does some real terrible things. Yeah, maybe not anymore. Yeah, maybe. I really, that's the part that confused me. And we'll get into that. Um, which, again, of course, you puts the series where Ethan is now going to some sort of castle somewhere and fighting vampire ladies and other objects and other creatures. So uh, I'm going to go, we're going to, we're going to talk about uh Andrew, since you're the Resident Evil guy in terms of uh, Resident Evil 3, and we've had conversations before, <clears throat> what did you think of the trailers that they showed off for specifically Resident Evil Village? Yeah. Um, well, I guess I should probably preface this, but I haven't played every single Resident Evil no, game of course. out there. But I have definitely tried to play some of the biggest entries in the series, um, this last one being RE3 Remake, which I enjoyed. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of the trailers and everything we saw today, um, I really am digging like the Van Helsing Gothic vibe that I'm getting from this and I'm totally cool with it. Like, um, Alex O'Neill pro rational passions. I were talking about this on our little thing that we just did, um, where it kind of is like, where do you go from here? You know what I mean? And like, this is where it. I feel like it's supposed to go in terms of what the series is. You know, we started with straight up zombies and then we kind of moved into like a virus and then we kind of moved into like this, you know, goo that like infects you and like, and now we're at <laughs> vampires Louisiana. and Fucking body. Yeah, now we're at like, <laughs> yeah, vampires and werewolves and giant like hairy men and yeah what was that again i have so uh, many questions <laughs> i don't know i have a lot of questions too but like i'm totally cool with where this is going and i i dig like pretty much everything i saw like specifically for resident evil 8 um and we were talking about this too but i'm a i love any game that is like hey here's a shopkeeper and this guy's gonna be his own character and like you're gonna fall this in love with personality. him personality. Yeah, yes. like this guy's got a personality. Like I like this guy. Like any game that like capitalizes on that, which is what I feel like this is gonna do, is I is like a winner in my book. You know, like God of War did it with like the two brothers, and then you know, like obviously Resident Evil Four with you know, what the are you stranger. Yeah, that guy. You know, like I don't know. Shopkeepers are cool. So yeah i'm glad at least they are fleshing out the shopkeeper I and mean, as much as i love what are you buying what are you selling um, yeah and that's it's just, just that it, yeah. he's just that he's nothing else this guy has a name he has like personality you're gonna find him in different such scenarios according to this trailer yeah. so that's 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 really cool ricky uh Go what ahead, what what did you think of everything that we saw yeah i agree i think it looks really cool um i'm getting you know some underworld vibes from uh it being werewolves versus uh, vampires i also think it's interesting that the you know because when the vampires disperse into whatever at first i thought that they were bats like you would think of in normal yes vampires but they're actually i think they're lotuses of some type it looks very something. similar some, some type of bug uh whatever they are which i don't know like i think that that's going to help tie it back into not not that resident evil is like grounded in any way <laughs> but uh i think like that's going to do the weird resident evil grounding of these weird vampires you know so um stuff like, like little details like that stuck out to me as stuff that is going to make this fit into that fit into the series in the way that i like you know um and you know <laughs> i know everyone's all about the big vampire lady but personally my favorite is the duke so far that guy is <laughs> What a big dumb idiot! And <laughs> I hope I get to see a lot of him because, you, yeah. like, I just came off of um, Final Fantasy VII like a month ago, and the way that Don Cornejo's belly jiggles was one of my favorite parts of that whole game. And so I'm hoping we get the same jiggle physics in the RE engine with the Duke because that that Square like, and Capcom uh, talked, collaborated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the Duke has a big old belly, and I'm ready to see that thing flop around. Now I just hope that the Duke is just married to the big tall vampire lady, and then I would just live my personal life fantasy of one day getting the tall lady that I ever wanted. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 awesome. Yeah, I, I personally, 
I think that the Duke is interesting um, from the way that he is first introduced in the trailer. Um, but also just the fact that he has like that cart that has a bunch of things that open up. I think that's really cool. It reminded me of um, the uh, the Wizard of Oz from the beginning of the movie where he just has all those wares. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I'm really excited for this. Jerry, what, what do you think of everything that we saw in this trailer? I think so Resident Evil kind of gets um, just like two very sort of things like ideas that are contradictory, but both describe Resident Evil. Sure. And there's this idea that Resident Evil kind of just does the same thing all of, like over and over again, um, which in a way is true. But Resident Evil also has a long history of experimenting with the formula in ways that are weird. Like uh, Resident Evil had an online, they made an online survivor survival game in the PlayStation 2. They had a first-person shooter in the PlayStation 1. Um, the Mercenaries, like, s- side mode was their first mobile game um, when they tried to, like, spin it off into their own thing, which is also in the, the 3DS, I think, at some point. Yeah. So, like, Capcom does like to get super weird with Resident Evil, uh, both of how they deliver the IP, but, like, also where, like, things end up, like how Jill ends up in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, uh, like how you can find these characters everywhere. Like there's just monster hunter crossovers and whatnot. <laughs> um, so Capcom does really love putting resident evil wherever they can, however they can. Um, but they got into this rhythm where people kind of loved four so much. They just tried to make four or three times and <laughs> yeah. uh, more than three times. And it just didn't really, people kind of didn't want it anymore. And seven proved that you can, you can, there's still room to reinvent this, but still make it resident evil. Like you don't have to change everything. You can change a lot of it. But like, if you really need this to be about a virus from Umbrella, you can still do that too. But it's time to look around you and be inspired by like maybe the other horror games that happened in the past 20 years. And it's cool that 8 looks like they really got the right feedback from 7. So yeah. like 8 almost feels like 4, where they're like, what if we just remove this from the confines of the American corporal corporal state and just put this in a weird place in Europe, literally in a castle with some vampires and werewolves. Let's start there and we can backtrack our way into making this some Resident Evil shit. Like everybody knows we can put umbrella in here somehow, but yeah. like, let's just start here and make it weird. And I appreciate that. This feels like the same. This feels like the Resident Evil team trying to do cool stuff instead of just the same stuff. Um, I don't, you know, we've saw very little gameplay, so do we know if that's actually true? I don't know, but I feel like it could be true, and that's, like, the point. No, for sure, and I and I agree with all majority of that statement, for sure. There are some things that I wish that maybe they would have held back in the trailers, and that, that the conflicting thing with, with, like, what I would say, what you said is, like, showing Chris Redfield and what his involvement seems to be in the game. Like, mm-hmm. if I knew none of that, and then that was obviously in the game, when I launch it, that I would definitely like feel that. But yeah, but now my mind is constantly thinking about what the hell is he doing? Yeah, what, is yeah, he what doing did with I miss the... in seven? Like, should yeah. I go be playing? Over, like, <laughs> yeah, do I have to play that DLC that everyone didn't like? I'm guessing I'm gonna yeah. have to <laughs> check that out. Is he in fact Chris Redfield and not Wesker in disguise? Like, what's happening? What does he have to do yeah. with the baby? Apparently, this the baby goes the... to Transylvania. Like, this is the fourth time they've redesigned Chris Redfield, by the way. <laughs> He's, got, he's, he's been got, four different human beings in the past 25 years. He's got to shrunk his arms now. So now he's finally like a normal length. So yeah, he's way. like a normal sized person now again. <laughs> he He's starting to look closer to uh, the movie version that we've got with, from, uh, oh, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, Captain uh, Captain Cold uh, from the Flash TV oh, show. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's looking closer and closer. Um, but yeah, no, that's 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 true. I, 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 again, I'm plot and story wise, so I don't want to know these things, but you're absolutely true about it sort of like taking everything that you've known of Resident Evil, but then now sort of reflecting on all the different things that it could possibly be in a totally new setting while also still being reflective to even its past, like four, where four mm-hmm. is very much like totally out of the Americana into somewhere else, totally new. And also just going into Steam and mm-hmm. typing horror games and playing some of those. Yes. Play Soma. Like, I'm sure, like, someone else has done horror good, too. Maybe, like, 100%. you should play some of that. And then yes. take, take some take some things, maybe. Yeah. Cherry pick a little here. Cherry pick a little here. All you right. know, try and, try and mix it up a bit. No, 100%. 
Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm very, very much excited. I'm so happy that I get to play some of it tonight uh, with uh, the oh, new yeah. demo that we're getting. Uh, who people who have PS5, sorry. Oh yeah, you PS5. Sorry, I'll stream it. You, <laughs> you privileged PS5ers. You can watch it. You can watch me stream tonight when I when I do that. Uh, I have to. <laughs> damn, I'm gonna have to log that giant thing and I have to put it in here. Um, but yeah, uh, we actually they announced also that yes, there will be a demo. Uh, starting today called the maiden which is a non-combat demo though it looks like you can get damaged from the trailer i'm excited that was kind of like the seven demo yes um, yes kind of like the seven demo. you just walked around and took pictures i think or something like that right uh you yeah. just well you just walked around and you solved some puzzles but that was oh, yeah, like... you looked at some stuff and you solved like a puzzle yeah and, exactly. and didn't it, like yeah. didn't the demo the seven demo get updated and like keep adding new stuff to it i thought that i think was that a rumor? I don't know. I only played it once, but I had, I, I had heard the rumor that like someone had went back and found a bunch of stuff, and they didn't know if they missed it or they was added. That's yeah, fair. I, think, I don't remember. Sure. I, I feel like I remember watching people on YouTube play it, and then they'd come back like a couple weeks later, and there'd be new stuff added to the demo. I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. I remember playing it a few times, and I was like, this is too spooky. I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> um, Imagine your demo getting a patch. And you're like, excuse me? <laughs> Cyberpunk's still waiting on all these patches. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, well, I'm excited. It looks like me and uh, Andrew are gonna be playing this tonight. So <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I'll try. I mean, from what I saw, I'm like, oh, God, I can't, I can't hit anything. I can't shoot anything. God, like, oh, <laughs> like, that's a whole thing that I gotta deal with and you know pump myself up for. But yeah, I mean, I'll probably maybe either watch someone stream it and see you know what it's like and then go from there. But yeah, I mean, I I have a weird relationship with Resident Evil. Like, I love the series, but yeah. I hate horror games. And it's so weird <laughs> for me because it's like, why would you start a podcast about a, a genre that you, like, can't even, you know, really vibe with? But, like, I'm slowly dipping myself further into more than just Resident Evil, you know? Like, so, I, I don't know. Like, no, it's this fair. just... Yeah, this just seems like a more intense version of Seven, which was already, a, you know, like a, a journey for me to get through as well. And I, I even um, told you on your your own show that I like was starting to get into Resident Evil. Like at that point, I was just finishing four, I think. Yeah. And I did finish yeah. four. I finished five. And then now I finished seven as well. Seven. If you want, if, if anyone uh, watched my Twitch from uh, October when I played all through seven, I was... I was a bitch. I couldn't handle, yeah. <laughs> couldn't handle most of that game. That game has you under pressure most of the time. Yeah, especially yeah, in the beginning, man. Yeah. By the end, I was John Wick, but by in the beginning, yeah, right. uh, yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah. Did you have any final thoughts uh, on the Resident Evil 8 or Village stuff, uh, Andrew? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm just excited. That's all I can really say about it is I'm excited for it. I'm excited that it's different. Um I'm excited that like they're trying something different. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, like I said before, I think this is a step in the, the only direction that this series could go just because, you know, it's so, it's so bombastic already. Like why not go to Europe? Why not go to a, a castle and get chased by like werewolves and vampires? Like it's Resident Evil. Like why yeah. not? So the only yeah. one thing in the trailer that I was like, not vibing so much with was, um, they showed all of the werewolves <laughs> running at you. <laughs> they showed like three or seven werewolves and they showed yeah. like the big honkering dude and they just kept had the same animation. So I'm wondering if that will get worked out or I don't know. I just thought that was I thought I was going to have to only worry about one werewolf. The fact that I have to worry about three of them. I'm not. <laughs> not going to werewolf also, town. Yeah. Are you talking about, the, what you talking about the part with the big dude? Well, yeah. With the giant big hairy dude. For a second there, that part I was like, "Is this turning into Dark Souls with guns?" Because <laughs> it, it feels it's very Dark Souls, it's yeah. very Bloodborne. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 terrified. I am excited to try the demo tonight only because I just want to see the visuals on my PS5. But now that's gonna look on 4K. Um, but yeah. Ricky, do you have any final thoughts on Resident Evil Village? Um, I just can't believe it's already it's gonna be out in May. Like yes. that's the part I keep coming back yeah. to. Is, I didn't know it was April. The rumor was April. Yeah. That's very close. I thought it was going to be March. Oh, wow. I, I was thinking this was going to be a fall game. So, I mean, I haven't. I try, I try to stay as far away from Resident Evil stuff as I can for the most part because I want to be surprised. But, um, sure. Yeah. I'm very excited. Can't wait. Yeah. They've had this, like, interesting, like, back and forth between, like, January and then, like, April, May, like, that kind of mm. kind of time yeah. frame, which has been great for me because I, I love games uh, early on in my year as well because 
I hate when it's all packed into just like September and forward. That's yep. usually not the most fun time for us. Um, so I'm glad that it's, yeah, sometime soon. Um, and then, Jared, do you have any, any final thoughts before we move on to the next uh, segment in the reveals? Um, her name is Lady Dim, Dim, yeah, Dim, Dim, Dimitrescu. Dimitrescu? Yeah. I don't Dimitri? know. It's, it sounds like future ex-wife material. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so excited. Uh, she also, yeah, she just looks like a combination of uh, Herman Munster's wife. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <kind of. laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'm totally in. It is like, yeah, it's kind of like monsters and like uh, uh, Adam's family. Yes. they're like, yeah, we love those. <laughs> you can do that. It's like you're gonna love this too. And I'm like, yes, yes, I am. Um, I already changed my little avatar to her as well, so I'm excited. Um, so that, that wasn't the only game that we got. We also got the Resident Evil remake for four. I'm so excited. No, we did not. We did not. <laughs> it's like. Psych. Uh, we did not get as much as I, me and Brittany Bob Brocker really wanted that. Um, we did get this. Now, I'm still confused as to what it is. Yeah. So that I thought it was a Telltale game. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Ricky? I'm sorry. So they did finally put up the page for uh, Reverse. Reverse. Is, that's right. It is a four to six person deathmatch game. <laughs> uh, five minute death matches where the player with the most points wins. If you get taken out, you um, transform into a powerful bioweapon to use against other players, and you can pick up virus capsules to transform into even stronger bioweapons. Mm. Getting revenge is a, also a great way to score more points. <laughs> Exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it is a... Yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't know if this is going to be any good. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be terrible, but <laughs> that's what it's going to be. I need to see more. Like, yeah. this, the, what we saw in that was booty. But yes, I I think there's potential just conceptually because I think you know most multiplayer games are kind of just basic bitch multiplayer games. But like with a tight enough loop and with a group of people, you can kind of make this lit. And on the surface, it doesn't sound like something that'd be balanced or competitive at all. No, um, no, no. but you know, neither really was Doom Eternal's multiplayer that I found to be great. So I think it just depends on what you're what you're here for. Sure. Uh, yeah. What I'm not here for is what I saw, but I am open to seeing a beta and like watching people play whole games of it and and giving it a chance there. It's not right. mercenaries; it should be, but like close enough, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I personally, I, guess I just don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I just don't like. I don't think Resident Evil gunplay fits a multiplayer game. So unless it's they change that, I don't know. And it didn't look like it was first person either. And all the yeah, I couldn't tell. footage they've shown is third person. So I'm mm -hmm. assuming they're going to stay that way. Um, so unless they make it a lot snappier, it is going to be hard for me to get into, I feel like. At least it's Although, free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is free if you end up buying it on the PS5. Which, so is it only exclusive to the PlayStation uh, console? The multiplayer? No, I mean, just uh, both... Resident Evil Village no. as well. Okay. No, no Village kept, was... is it just does it have exclusive content or something? Because in the in the showcase they just like it's only PS5 and PS4 and they didn't say anything else. I don't True. think so. I think that was just I think that's just like a marketing deal because yeah, it's coming out on Xbox, Xbox, Xbox One, Series X, and yeah. PC. Got it. So and they, they also said, didn't say anything yeah. VR either too, right? Oh, uh, maybe. I didn't do like something in the trailer, so I don't know. Post patch or something like that, but they it said like demo exclusive to playstation 5 today but will come out on all other platforms like at a later date or whatever got it yeah because when i remember when they were just show they just showed like the the only consoles that i saw were ps4 ps or ps5 ps4 yeah yeah yeah, yeah which i guess yeah, cool for people that want to play it on ps4 yeah. i'm so glad that they, they, they just confirmed that too because yeah. they weren't sure if they were going to put it on ps4 i you know as much as i'm like uh it's like hey everyone needs to play these games i also want exclusives or at least the games and least be focused on a system but that's fine i'm glad mm -hmm. ps4 people have it as well yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna play this stupid thing um mm -hmm. i played a little bit of the last multiple they've been putting out weird multiplayers <laughs> they had one on the uh not like, i didn't play the last one the one that was on yeah, with three with three resistance yeah. i didn't I play played that. a couple yeah. matches of that and i was like cool concept but i it's just it wasn't that fun. one's like over spec there was like too much concept yes. yeah yeah 100 yes. percent. and well, then once yeah, you put too many dogs yeah. in one room you're fucked yeah <laughs> yeah then they I also the Raccoon like, City thing, too, and that was weird. Yeah. 
I felt yeah, like our resistance was kind of just like a add on. Like, like yeah. that's what you were paying for, you yeah. know? And like RE3 was actually just like DLC. <laughs> so I wish it was, I wish it was the other way around where it was like, I got a more fleshed out RE3 experience, even though I already, I liked what we got, but mm. I don't know. They're trying something different. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just glad that it's free. Yeah. It looks like a Telltale game. A lo- at least the <laughs> locations I was like, Oh, I recognize that area. And all the character models look similar to what you remember them, but they are cell shaded in a weird way. Telltale yeah, way. I, don't, I don't know why we're doing the borderland yeah. shit but we, we got we don't have we don't have to do this anymore we left <laughs> we can leave it behind uh, there oh, is man. there is an image of jill fighting three nemesis at once great so that sounds cool <laughs> <laughs> oh well that's gonna be great and then of course i saw there was resident evil seven things in there and i'll probably put eight in there eventually so Cool, it's free, and it comes with, uh, if you buy, obviously, Resident Evil Village, so I'll give it a shot. I mean, if it has another trophy list, I'll you know, maybe dabble in it a little bit. <laughs> it looks a lot more fun than, I will say, than Resistance, because Resistance, I think, I think it just was, I don't know, I just did not, for some reason, it looked too real, but it was too arcadey, and this looks arcadey, so I'm okay with that. Like, I don't know, it just, something about it. That Then Resistance tried to jump on a wave that was already sort of done try to do that asymmetric yeah. horror yeah. stuff 100%. and like yeah we, we had already decided that dead by daylight since it was the free one that's the one we're all gonna like yes. and like and, and the friday the 13th thing lost their license, license so like yeah. there was nothing left to do and resident evil was definitely not going to be better or worse in a way that anyone's gonna have any attention around no, yeah um, at this point, they should just license uh, Nemesis to Dead by Daylight. But you would <laughs> think, yeah, right, cut your losses, I guess. But but you know. but speaking of a, another license that is crossing over with Resident Evil, um, of course, we also got a surprise announcement from Massive, who I thought I thought I thought uh, Division Two was done at this point, but no, it's still going. I thought they were moving mm-hmm. on to their Star Wars joint. Um, we're getting a crossover with uh, Resident Evil was the 25th anniversary, obviously. We're getting costumes, and then we're also getting uh, Herc, the, the, the mercenary, and other things inside of Division 2. Does this, guys, interest you in playing Division 2 in any way? Uh, no. Yeah. No, not. no. I will log in just to get the one thing, but I'm never going to touch it, so I don't know why. But I'll log <laughs> in. I'll log in just because it's just uh, literally they just said, hey, if you just log in once, you'll get it. <laughs> All right, that's enough for me. I'll do it. Uh, especially if I think I have it on Stadia or something, so that that'll be that'll be fine. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I think that's pretty much all of the major announcements. Obviously, they announced the collector's deal book, uh, the collector's uh, editions, stuff like that. Uh, anybody want Chris Redfield himbo statues? I'm anybody in that? You're gonna get that. My friend, <laughs> my friend, <laughs> my friend Papa Frank. Bear needs his Papa Bear. <laughs> I, I need to get. I I skipped out on the Jill statue and the Leon statue. I, I got to go in on Chris. Like. I, just got to get it over with so yeah i think uh, my friend frank will definitely pick that up because he bought sevens and sevens was uh, a little toy house that and, was so cool and it came with a vhs tape with the finger in it so oh, that's cool <laughs> uh yeah. he's very much probably gonna get that one uh okay i think that pretty much wraps up all of the major things with the resident evil showcase um just I... the movie oh yeah i forgot about the movie yeah so there's gonna be another animated movie uh, those things are out of control are they canon are they not mm-hmm. canon i don't understand i don't know them. I have no idea. And they do weird, like, John Wick shit that doesn't make any sense. And The bullet fight, the fight, they're shooting the gun. Yeah, no, 100%. Where they're shooting guns, like, at the floor in a circle <laughs> around each other. In circles, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, don't, so I don't know. It's, I don't know, man. It's my favorite clip that I've seen in Every time someone posts it, I'm just like, this is funny. I, <laughs> I watch it every time. Uh, I don't I don't know why they thought that was okay. I think that's actually a TV series, by the way. The TV, the is cartoon? It? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I know it's on they, Netflix. I don't know if it's like a yeah. The they live said it was action. Post-4. What's up? They said it was post Resident Evil Four. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. By yeah. the way, are, is is are they is Jill and I'm sorry, not Jill, uh, Claire and Leon are they a thing? Because they they always show up together in things. I think every I think everyone has sexual tension with Leon. <laughs> I think that's his yeah. that's his personality. It's just a yeah. It happens. He walks in. Everyone's like, "Do I want to have sex with him? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He seems so sad." <laughs> yeah it does seem so sad why does he seem so sad because he was trying to be a cop and his city blew up and then he was trying to be secret service and then the, the, pr- the president's daughter got kidnapped and he's like this sucks and then the president My first day, everything i do <laughs> yeah. sucks he's basically john mcclain of of resident evil you know he's just mm-hmm. wrong place wrong time 
That's fair. That's fair. Uh, now that you mentioned, obviously, the animated thing, we can also talk a little bit about the movie. Do you guys have any excitement for the movie? No. Like the live action one? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to no, watch it. But I <laughs> yes. have to watch it? Yeah. I've, that's I've committed myself to seeing it, so that it doesn't fair. really matter if I like, want I to see it. I didn't watch Monster Hunter, but I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I was do totally down to watch Monster Hunter, <laughs> but then I heard some of the terrible things about it, and I was like, "No, I'm not going to watch Monster. Hunter. That was just fucked yeah, up." Yeah, I'm like, that. I'm not spending twenty dollars to rent this. On yeah, my not house. in my house. <laughs> uh, my to house. watch it on my couch, absolutely not. No, twenty dollars to watch it in a theater when there isn't a virus attempting to kill us all. Possible. Yeah, that's a dozen also in the twenty twenty. That could have happened. <laughs> But I could see adult Mario doing that in 2020 without uh, without a virus. That would have been great. Um, but no, I'm actually really excited for the movie, and primarily because I really love the cast choices that they chose for every single character, and the fact that they are focusing on sim- seemingly the game one and game two, and how they will mix that. I'm curious. And plus, they just showed a logo of like a helicopter with the original, or you know, uh, raccoons like stars logo, and they got me there because I was like, this looks. This looks authentic. I want it. Give it yeah. to me. It's also set in the 90s, so give me that as well. Play some Guns N' Roses in the background. I don't care. Let's get this started. <laughs> Who's but, directing it? Do you know? I don't know. I just probably know that. some no-name person. Probably. Yeah. But I know that so Robbie Amell's like playing Chris. It's like an episode Chris. of like, Once Upon a Time under their belt. Yeah, like, do this. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah probably CW most show. likely. Yeah, probably some CW thing. But... Anyways, thank you everyone for... Being here, this was a blast. Uh, I love talking about video games and then Resident Evil specifically. So this has been a delight. Uh, I do want to thank Ricky for being here. Thank you so much for facilitating and uh, just joining me as always. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Jared, if you can, uh, it's this is the first time we've been on camera. I just want to say thank you so much for being here. And I appreciate everything that you do whenever I see you on the Twitters. And, of course, read a lot of your work, especially reviews on IGN, which is pretty cool. Well, thank you. I just, uh, I'm a goblin on Twitter, and that <laughs> is kind of where I write. And then sometimes at IGN or Playboy or wherever, uh, just follow me on Twitter. You'll, I'll, I'll give you the breadcrumbs to take you places. Where can they find you on the internet? What's the, what's the uh, Twitter handle? At Jarrett Drone, J-A-R-R-E-T-T-J-A-W-N. For the longest time, That's, I thought that was your last name, by the way. <laughs> everyone does, apparently. <laughs> Blessing Aye Jr. apparently thought that was my last name until two weeks ago. <laughs> so. Sounds like that's Blessing, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> it does sound like Blessing. Andrew, it's a, always a pleasure to talk with you um, as well as, you know, appear on your show. So let me know if you have any other yeah. shows. I'd love to appear on any of them. If you want to do Resident Evil 8, come on, we're doing Resident yeah. Evil 8, right? Yeah, we're, uh, Alex O'Neill and I, we... For those of you that don't know, uh, we do a, I guess you could call it a yearly Resident Evil podcast that we started with Resident Evil 2 remake called Raccoon City Radio. Um, I'm sure we'll bring it back in some capacity for Resident Evil 8. I don't know if it's going to be like separate from Irrational Passions or if it's just going to be directly on there, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. But yeah, you can find me for all those updates whenever that is you know something that we solidify but you can find me on twitter at papa drew bear um but yeah i'm i'm excited for this game a lot for sure <laughs> and then ricky i know i skip i've skipped past this part where can they find you on the net uh just at ricky freck f-r-e-c-h fantastic and then of course you can find me at that mario rivera where of course uh, i will be musings about weird things all the time enjoy that i did a thing today about a man with pink hair i don't know Uh, everything about it was appealing not sure why just did it it was fun um but of course you can also find me here at youtube.com slash dual shockers where we post all of our videos our discussions our reviews our editorials and so much more i want to thank you so much for watching and of course until next time i'll see you uh not in raccoon city (laughs) definitely not definitely not (laughs) raccoon city (laughs) 